Most of us use Wi-Fi to connect to the internet, which is a wireless connection that links our devices like smartphones, tablets, and even laptops to the internet. That should make sense even to a two-year-old. He's probably watching this on his laptop or even tablet. While the odds are your neighbor isn't trying to hack into your router, but that doesn't mean that you should let your Wi-Fi be vulnerable now, does it? Before we get started though, do know that most wireless routers have different interfaces and settings jargon. But for the sake of this video, I'll be poking around with Netgear R7000 and most of the structure and settings should be same for the rest of them. With that out of the way, let's get started, shall we? First things first, to access your router, fire up the web browser on a device that's connected to your router and type in the router's IP address. If you don't know the IP address or your router, pull up the command prompt and type in ipconfig. The IP address that's listed as your default gateway. If you're on your Mac, pull up system preferences and network and click on advanced in the bottom right corner. Click on the TCP IP option towards the top of the next window and look for your router's IP address. Type the IP address into the web browser and then hit enter. Next, it'll ask you for your username and password of your router. Type that in, it's usually admin and admin or admin and password. And then boom, you're in. First thing you need to do is make sure that your router is running the most up-to-date firmware. Some routers require you to upload new firmware yourself by downloading the right firmware from your router's manufacturer, while others let you automatically update the firmware with the click of a button. In general, you'll have to check for a new firmware fairly regularly as it's important if you want to keep your router protected from external attacks. Remember, we use the default username and password to log into the network? Well, don't do that. What if an intruder connects to your Wi-Fi network and then easily finds your username and password by using the websites like routerspassword.com? and then kicks you out of your own Wi-Fi network. So it's important to use a login and password that's really hard to guess. WEP and WPA can be easily cracked with simple brute force attacks. So it goes without saying that you should only use WPA2 encryption only. In fact, WPA3 will be released later in 2018 so if you're watching this video after a year or two, check if your router supports WPA3. If you don't know what WPS is, it's a small button at the back of your router which lets you connect your Wi-Fi devices to your router without the need of typing in complex passwords. Just press the button and enter the WPS6 digit pen. While it may sound cool, but it does more harm than any good. These pin numbers are much more easier to brute force than say a really tough to guess password. So make sure you disable the WPS pin and you're not using it anyway. By default you're using the DNS provided by your ISP. They're faster for sure but not necessarily secure. So change the DNS to a Google DNS or Cloudflare DNS server. They'll add an extra layer of security and prevent you from any man-in-the-middle attacks or pop-ups or even redirects. You can even set up OpenDNS on your router to set up free parental control on your network. Or if you wish to access geo-restricted content, just set up SmartDNS Proxy instead. It's really secure as well. Most routers offer features like remote management or remote administration. If you don't know what they are or what they do, just make sure they're disabled. If you're not a pro gamer or even use torrents, then consider disabling UPnP on your router. And the same for port forwarding, FTP, USB, etc. If you're not using them actively, just turn them off. Guess Wi-Fi's are great. Your router sets up a second SSID which your friends and relatives can connect and use the internet while having no connection with your regular Wi-Fi network. As awesome as it sounds, not many people are using it. Another reason to use guest network is for smart home gadgets. If someone takes advantage of a vulnerability in your smart speaker and breaks into your network, then they still can't access your original Wi-Fi network. In a nutshell, use a good password with WPA2 encryption and turn off WPS. 
Also, check out Smart DNS Proxy if you're keen to unblock geo-restricted content on sites like Netflix, Hulu, Pandora, Amazon Prime Video, and what have you. We've done plenty of videos on how to set ups and stuff like that, so do check them out. And subscribe if you're new here. Thanks for watching.